So hi, welcome. We will now talk about the area moment of inertia. Uh, we have a beam fixed in a wall, and we have a force acting of this on this beam here. And then we know the stress distribution of this beam in an elastic model looks like this, and the neutral axis is here in the center of gravity of this beam. If I imagine here this beam is rectangular, yes, then oh, this is the area moment of inertia. This is the center of gravity. And if I uh, want to know what is the stress here, the maximum stress here, sigma, then I have to have the moment in this position, yes, and I have to divide it to the uh, section modulus, W elastic, yeah, that is MB divided by I about this x axis, x axis times E max. E max is the distance from the neutral axis to the fiber which has the longest distance to this neutral axis here. Yes, then I find this maximal stress here, and to calculate it, I have to have know the moment, that's easy, yes, that's the force times the length from here to here. Yeah, but Ix is the area moment of inertia. Area moment of inertia. Yeah, and this is easy to calculate if I have a rectangular cross section. Let me see if a cross section looks like this. Yes, here is the axis of interest x. Yeah, that can be y. Yes, then I know here that is 200. As an example here, that can be 100. Yes, and if I then want to know the area moment of inertia about this x axis, ix is then the width times the height to the third divided by 12. So b times h to the third divided by 12. Yes, and that is here 100 times 200 to the third divided by 12. So if I calculate it, I get as a result here 66,666,666 and if I have a unit millimeter, so it's millimeter to the fourth. Yeah. So the area moment of inertia is very easy to calculate in connecting with rectangular profiles, but if you now have a profile which is more, more complicated, I will show you two ways to calculate the area moment of inertia. So, so let's make the assumption that our profile looks like this. Yes, and then let's say, let us say here this 100. That is 20. And also 20. And the height is 200. And the web thickness, let's say it's now we have this profile here, and we are interested in the area moment of inertia. Let us say this is the axis of interest, x. Yes. So I can use a special uh, knowledge if I want to calculate this. I can say if I have an object that looks like this, and I want to calculate the area moment of inertia about this horizontal axis here, I can. Uh, move this element in the middle to the left or to the right side and will not change the area moment of inertia. That means that's the same as uh, I take this element here. So I moved this middle element to the left side. And that is again this area moment of inertia of this object minus the inner object. And then I have again rectangular objects here the inner object. Rectangular object then and then it's easy to calculate. So let's make it like uh, I have shown here. Yes, I say I have first the dimensions of the whole object here, which is here one hundred and here two hundred minus this inner object. So this is from here to here is 160, and from here to uh, from from here to here is then this is 100 minus 20, so 80. So it means Ix 
is i of this big object minus i of this small object. So we can uh, say it like this. It is b times h to the third divided by 12. If I look on this big rectangle there, uh, minus this small rectangle b times h to the third divided by 12. If I calculate it, it is then 100 times 200 to the third divided by 12 minus 80 times 160 to the third divided by 12. And if I calculate it, I get as a result 39,000, 39,360,000 millimeters to the fourth. 360,000 millimeter to the fourth if the unit is millimeter. Yes. But we can calculate it in an alternative way if we use Steiner's law. That's the result, Steiner's law. So we have the same object. Here the width is 100, the height is 200. 100 and the thickness of the planes is, is 20 and also of the web is 20 yes. and then we are interested in the area moment of inertia about this axis here and then we have uh, the profile consists of an object that has the center of gravity on this axis so it's easy to calculate it but this object here, this object, this object, they have a center of gravity here which has an offset from this element here, from this neutral axis. That means you have to use the Steiner's law. Yeah. Our calculation consists of an inner rectangle, 20 and 160. So this object, which is on the line, yeah, plus two elements, which have has an offset here and here. If I see on the center of gravity of these elements here, yes, so the length 100 and the height 20, and here the same 100 and here 20, and here we have an offset, offset from here to here, which is 90 from here to here. 90, and well, here the same, from here to here, 90. Yes, and they have not the center of gravity on this axis of interest, so we have to use Steiner's law, and Steiner's law look like, looks like this. If I have an object with a center of gravity with an offset to the axis of interest, I will first calculate, so that's the axis of interest, I will first calculate this Arrow moment of inertia as if the axis of interest is here, and then I will see on the offset, let me say this offset is S, and I have to calculate like this. I say Ix is Is, so it means as if the axis of interest goes to the center of gravity, plus a correction factor, plus S squared times A, which A is the area of this object. And then I get the area moment of inertia of this object which has a center of gravity in a, in an offset position to the axis of interest. And that will I use uh, in connection with uh, this object here. That's because I have, once I have this here, this element here, which has the right position of the center of gravity, plus these two objects with, with an offset in the center of gravity. So I can write it down, I can say, first I have Ix of the whole profile here, is this here, 20 times 160 to the third divided by 12, plus, and now I take this formula. First I look on this as if it has the, the axis of interest through the center of gravity. So I write down um, 100 times 20 to the third divided by 12, plus a correction factor. Correction factor is this S squared, so 90 squared, times 20 times 100, which is the area. And this element do I have two times. I have it here, and I have it here, so times 2. And if I then calculate this, 
I get as a result, same as I had before. Then I get, the, okay, uh, get this 39,360,000 millimeter to the force if I uh, say the unit is millimeters. So we have seen here two possibilities to calculate the area moment of inertia in connection with the elastic model. The first was uh, a kind of model that allowed to move elements along this axis of interest and then uh, get a geometry which is easier to calculate and the second model was to use this Steiner's law to calculate parts of a profile which has have a center of gravity which is not on this axis of interest.